guys, welcome back to Mini Life, your favorite classic mini podcast on the web. I am your host, Mini Mike. Today we have a podcast coming to you all the way in the future in Australia. Rohan and I sat down. He's Self Restoration Society on Instagram. We finally got our schedules uh, figured out so we can get this thing done. Awesome mini, one of my favorites on Instagram. Um, awesome guy, very cool story. Tune in to check it out right now and let me know how I'm doing. What do you want to see different on the podcast? Am I doing okay? Do you want to see anything special that I'm not doing? Um, follow for more content. We have some cool stuff in the pipeline, so stay tuned and enjoy the show. Right, I think we are live with Self Restoration Society. Is that where you got that? Please tell me yes. Uh, it was a bit of a piss take from that, yeah. <laughs> uh, I love it. When I first saw uh, it, I was like, this is fantastic. There's not a lot of uh, preservation going on. It's uh, it's more restoration. So. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So um, thank you for being on the show. We have Rohan here, Instagram handle self underscore restoration underscore society. Uh, a mini after my own heart. I love it. When I first saw it, I was like, this is this is fantastic. So I'm uh, assuming we're going to get into that a little bit um, later on. But uh, again, thanks for being on, man. I appreciate it. No worries at all. Thank you for uh, having me. It's cool. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'm, I'm uh, excited for everyone. Um, Rohan's in Australia. But what area again in Australia? Uh, Queensland, Brisbane. Que- Queensland. So I'm in Southern California. So I was doing the math. You're like 18 hours ahead, but I forgot about the ahead apart. So <laughs> I don't know why I was just like, oh yeah, this, this should work. And we're working around a schedule. So we finally got it figured out. So we managed, uh, we managed to do it. So there's, my first, uh, uh, no need for midnight calls. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, my very first and very important question is, um, you know, I've never been to Australia, and in America, we always hear that Australian toilets flush backwards. Is that true? Uh, I've never been to the U.S., so I... <laughs> <laughs> I think we might need to take a break and go flush our toilets and see which yeah, way we'll, they spin. We'll flush them. According to The <laughs> Simpsons, it does, so uh, we'll call that factual. I mean, it could be because, like you said, you're you're in another... You're on Sunday right now. It's Saturday for me. Uh, and it's summer for you. It's, I mean, it's Southern California, so it's really not winter. I was just at the beach. It's so. not winter. <laughs> <laughs> not winter there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, nah, just, uh, just time traveling and I'll tell you what happens on Sunday. <laughs> Fantastic. Cool. Cool. Rohan, tell me, man, how'd you get into minis? I think I saw you post uh, a picture today, uh, or maybe yesterday, I believe it was you, and your mini, and then your father and his mini, or? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was, Dad's mini was my first real um, bit of getting into into minis, but I guess my first, I guess, recollection of a mini, my, uh, my grandma had a Clubman van, uh, which I used to sit in the back of on the spare tire on a blanket while she'd uh, drive around, so... Keep in mind, this was the late 80s, so road rules were a little less uh, important back then, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, then my uh, my dad purchased a, uh, a 63850 out of a deceased estate, uh, I want to say probably 96, 97. Um, ash grey, matching numbers, it was fairly tidy, but it had been sitting you know, in a shed, in a barn, call it what you like, but um, it probably would have polished up okay, but he didn't like the colour, so uh, my mum and my stepdad had a mechanical workshop, uh, so he commissioned them to do a bit of a resto on it, so that was uh, where I would jump in after school and fiddle around with it and do bits and pieces, so that's kind of where I got my uh, my love for it, I guess. But uh, yeah, 
What uh, what year was that with your, your dad got his... So was it his mother? You, you said your grandmother. Was it his mother that had the uh, the clubman van? No, no, no. So, no. so the clubman van was my grandma's on my mum's side. Oh, okay. Uh, and then, um, yeah, dad bought this 63850 for 250 bucks out of a deceased estate um, somewhere. I don't know, know where it came from, but, uh, yeah, it was... Uh, was it was all right? What, about what year was that? Uh, for uh, I think ninety six, ninety seven, somewhere around there. All right, cool. And you started kind of working on it with him. You said it was in pretty good condition, though. And uh, uh, like it, it needed some love. But looking back now, you probably could have uh, run a, a buff over it, and it probably would have polished up half okay. <laughs> Um, obviously replaced carpets and all that kind of stuff, but yeah, he ended up getting it, um, getting it painted Monza red, uh, drove it around for a little while like that. And then he did a full strip down and complete resto a couple of years after that. Uh, it is now blue. So yeah, I was going to say, I see the, the picture, uh, it's a blue mini. Yeah. Looks like it look it kinda looks like an island blue, but it's hard to tell in that picture. But cool picture, yeah, by the it's way. Actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh it's actually a a Nissan Pulsar blue. Oh. So uh, I'm not sure whether you guys have got pulsars over there if they're a different name, but they're um yeah. Small small little uh Nissan. Perhaps, yeah. I'm not sh- honestly I don't know, but I know what a I've heard of Nissan Pulsar before, so no biggie. Um, cool. So was that like kind of your dad's one and only? Does he still have that? Uh, so my dad has uh, has since passed, but my stepmom still has has the car. So oh, sorry to hear that. Um, he, yeah, that's life, I guess, isn't it? Um, but he he had a few minis over that time. Uh, he had a not sure what the exact color is. He had a '62. 850 as well, um, and an O2 Cooper, and he bought a few other cars for for parts uh, in that time as well. There was a Clubman at one point, uh, which was supposed to be pretty good, but turned out to be a, a junker, but he still got some parts out of it. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, I mean, it sounds like... Uh... It kind of ran in your blood. So tell me how you found your Mini. Your uh, current Mini, yeah, at least. I don't know. We'll yeah. get into how many you actually have yeah. or have had. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, my current Mini, which is a 64 850, uh, or at least was originally. Um, I, uh, I was given that by my dad. He uh, he had seen it in a window tinters workshop uh, in the town where he had lived, and he kept pestering the guy for a couple of years that he wanted to buy it. This thing had 1275 twin SUs, um, disc brakes, and Dad was just like, "I've got to have this car." And eventually, um, you know, Dad was fairly persistent, and uh, I think he probably pissed him off to the point where he managed to buy it off him. But um, paid 1200 bucks for it uh, 20 years ago, which was even still pretty cheap back then, considering it had brand new seven and a half inch um, AP brakes on it, so uh, right. uh, discs. Um, so the whole uh, whole plan with that was, uh, all right, son, you can have the car because I don't need another one. Because at that point he had uh, had the 62 and the 63, so he didn't need the 64. Um, he, he took the discs and uh, he let me keep the 1275 for a little while. Um, he stripped the uh, brakes he, he put, <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he put drum brakes back on it for me. So that was, oh, uh, nice, nice. That was, that was a good bit of fun. Safety first. Um, <laughs> keep the 1275. Here are the drums. <laughs> yeah. Lucky, uh, lucky minis have great compression braking. So. Right. But, uh, yeah, so that was uh, pretty much the the nuts and the bolts are of that um yeah the, the car was too good to get rid of he only wanted it for for a few bits off it so 
Um, previous to that, I'd purchased a 65 uh, Mini Deluxe. Uh, I'm not sure whether uh, what the whether you guys have got the same kind of model specs over there, but had hydro suspension and wind up windows, all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it had been punched in the front. It was um, not too bad, but it was a little bit um, out of my depth, I guess. This was pre-YouTube and learning how to do stuff. Right. Um, or at least having the, the confidence to, to start on it. So Right, right. Um, I bought it, and my stepdad had told me, he said, don't strip it because you'll never get it back together. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah dramas. Paint came off it, engine came out, engine came to pieces, and he, his shed was full of mini bits at that point. Um, so very, uh, very grateful he didn't crack the shit too hard on it. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I'd, uh, I'd completely lost interest in this car by then. So uh, it was just kind of a bit of a too hard basket. And uh, yeah, so I got the 64 Mini from Dad, and then my mum took over the 65 Deluxe as a project for herself, which is that uh, the purple one you may have seen. If uh, I did see that, out my, checking out the Instagram. So, so your mom has that now. Yeah, yeah, still got it. So that's um, it's currently got a 1310 uh, in it. It's a bit of a hodgepodge of bits and pieces. Uh, got a few clubman bits in it, um, so like clubman seats, clubman dash, all that kind of thing. Right. But it's um, still got the hydro suspension, so really, really nice to to cruise along in. But uh, yeah. So that's cool. So so that was kind of that purple one on your Instagram. The sixty five deluxe was kind of your first one that you bought, and then your dad, yes. kind of around the same ish time, bought the sixty four, and you kind of inherited that one. Yeah. About the same time. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. How you like the hydro you said though? Ah. I, do. I just just because <laughs> I I I'm, I'm going to be selfish because I've been, I don't know why I just got on a kick and my my Cooper S is nowhere near being the point where I need to deal with the suspension, but uh I just went on a rabbit hole yesterday. I was like cuz I was collecting parts to switch it over to dry suspension just cuz I know it. I know exactly how to how I want to set it up. I was like I feel like I should keep the hydro and I wanted yeah. to learn how to kind of uh, modify it. So I was digging through the wizard book, how much I should uh, shim off the knuckles and all this kind of stuff. But everyone, everyone says you're going to regret it if you, if you don't keep it. So I'm just interested. Yeah. yeah it's, it, oh, I've heard the same thing. It's like, if you've, if it still works and everything's there, just, uh, just keep it. And it's it is a really nice ride, so um, yeah. Unless of course you you're racing and you just drain all the fluid out of it and sit on the bump stops. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what I might just do anyway and just keep it for looks. I don't know, but yeah, I was going through looking at um, uh, putting the shocks up front. I guess Vizard says two hundred thou up front. You can shave off in the back. You can do three hundred thou competition bumps that kind of stuff so i don't know we'll see we'll see if it if it doesn't sit low enough then i don't want it I'm you, like... <laughs> you can uh, you can always start with the hydro and then change it yeah. later on i guess yeah yeah so that's cool so um let's see so what was i going to say oh what uh you you mentioned um the deluxe about well realistically in the united states i think they i don't remember the exact years but i think it was like I don't know, 63 to 67, let's just call it. I could be wrong. Don't everyone roast me for it, but I, I don't remember the exact years. But that's pretty much the only years they imported minis into the United States. Um, and then everything else has just been imported after the fact. Yeah. And we never had, a, 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 I mean, I don't know if UK is like this, but the United States, at least my group of friends, they're always jealous when somebody has Aussie doors or... Um, New Zealand uh, doors because they're the handles are usually different and they had the roll up windows for the early ones with the little pop out vent and that's what this deluxe yeah. has correct yeah 
Yeah, because yeah, all of ours rotten. had just the sliding window, and then it went to just the full roll-up window when it went to um, Mark III, I guess. Yeah, so in um, so my green car, that was originally a slidey window car. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at some point in its life, it got changed to the later doors. Um, and what I've been told by people a bit older and more knowledgeable than myself, apparently that was a thing uh, that people did. In, uh, in the 60s and 70s to kind of make them a little bit more modern and a bit nicer was right. they put the, the wind-up doors on them. But um, those little quarter glass windows on the front, man, no need for aircon. Those things are amazing. You are they? Yeah, see, that's... Those I... over. Oh, so good. <laughs> yeah, because my... Yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't driven one with uh, slider windows yet. Mine just has the old Rover or the late uh, model Rover whole roll-up yeah, windows. windows. Yeah, the full window, but uh, I've heard that little pop-out window is glorious. Oh, it's, yeah, amazing. I'm I'm looking through Instagram right now as we talk. I, was, I don't think I've ever seen, like, the inside of the door. Like, is it, does it still have, like, a like a Mark I-looking door pocket? Or does it have, uh, like, where did, I'm, I'm trying to yeah. figure it out. Does yeah, it yeah, kind of so look like my indoor? <laughs> uh, so it's still got the, the steel door pocket in it mm-hmm. but they're um so like the slidey doors they're you know 200 mil high um roughly um, i don't know what that these, means i'm american we, we speak in 200 millimeters we'll, we'll call it uh <laughs> call it eight inches I'm just um, <laughs> but uh yeah these uh the wind-up doors have got a bit of a smaller door bin on them so not quite as not quite as tall, not quite as deep, because obviously the windows uh, fill That's in that cool. spot. That's cool. Do you know uh, that we're going down a rabbit hole right now? Then do you know um, when the I think it was Australian doors that have like the actual like kind of scoop pull out and not like the Mark One levers type? Do you, Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. the uh, the flappy pedal. Yeah, uh, the door little flappy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm not 100% sure on the year. I think it was 70 or 71. I know the Mark II Cooper S in Australia, the ones they use for the police cars, mm-hmm. had the, the flappy paddle door handles and a very, um, very much uh, wanted, I guess. Yeah. So they didn't uh, didn't make too many of them from what I understand. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, those are cool. Those are sought after for sure. Um one of our uh, members had a um, clubman with a uh, Aussie clubman that had those doors and they're just, they just look cool. I don't know. I guess you want what you can't yeah. have. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. All right. So you had the, you had the purple car. Was it purple then or was that? No. So it re-spray? started out. Uh, yeah. So it started reg- <clears throat> Try that again. started out with, um, it was toga white originally. Okay. With red interior, um, had a rattle can black bonnet, um, but um, yeah, unfortunately, I don't have a photo of that because I just I got it home and I just I started stripping it, stripping it I, right I, away. <laughs> yeah, I, I bought it from some guy that looked fairly seedy, and um, I did no checks on it whatsoever. I just went. I think I was about eighteen at the time. Um, went over. Yep, cool. It's a mini. It had a um, a Cooper head on it, so I was like, "Oh, I just got to have this." Done. And uh, yeah, got it home. I think it was about twelve hundred dollars or something like that. Um, I paid at the time, and it was just yeah, hooked into it. It was right. a bit um, bit of a mess, but it turned yeah. out all right. Aren't they all? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. man! So is that is that purple the later Rover purple, or is that a different color from another manufacturer? No, it is a Ford uh, Ford Australia purple. Oh, interesting, cool. So yeah, because it kind of looks like I, I forget what the was it. I don't remember the name. There's like a later model Rover that had a similar purple that looks pretty cool. Cool, I like yeah. that a lot. Um, cool. All right, I want to jump back into your. Uh, main car now the green one um for those that don't know give me a little explanation about it describe it 
Let's talk about some of the features of it. I want to kind of get into it because this is, if anyone knows what my car looks like, this is kind of like what I wish my car looked like. It looks like it's real patina, but <laughs> mine's, yeah. ca- mine's kind of like half half. I feel like. <laughs> yeah. So um, for those that haven't seen it, um, it is British Racing green, white roof, uh, gold contesters, uh, roof rack, and uh, stupidly oversized driving lights on the front of it. <laughs> but um, it is exceptionally rusty. Uh, not structural, but just the paint is all flaked off, and it's uh, yeah. I think it's probably about a sixty forty split between actually having paint and having rust. So, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it uh, it got left under under a tree, and then the tree grew over it, and uh, yeah, that's why it looks the way it does today. It, did you? like clear over any of that rust or is it just kind of bare and you're just kind of keeping it tidy uh well it's hard to, it's hard to was, tell in the pictures yeah so originally i was going to just leave it but the roof was really starting to um yeah it was going to end up a convertible if i'd left it <laughs> uh, so did a bit of research and um all the the classic patina car guys, uh, especially the V-Dub guys, mm-hmm. it either came down to anchor wax or Penetrol. So I went down the Penetrol route and um, so yeah, I Penetrol the roof and that came up pretty good. Uh, I've done a few other panels as well, but just trying to find, because it's my daily driver at the moment, trying to find that little window of where I can do a certain amount and give it enough time to dry without it um, before I need to drive it again. So. Just right. doing panel at a time, basically. Right. Yes. For, so for those that haven't seen it, please go check this out because it's it looks so cool. I mean, I, it's right up my alley. I, I'm sure we'll maybe we'll jump into this topic now. I'm sure you get hate all the time, um, maybe in the comments or something like that, for letting it rust over and you're you're ruining a, a good, perfectly good car. It's a Mark One. Blah 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 blah. I'm sure you get shit all the time, but. It just looks badass, and, and you drive it, and it seems like it's well maintained. Do you get a lot of hate for this and for the giant <laughs> rust flakes on it? But it, it just looks so perfect. Like everything about it looks like it's just, I don't know, it fits yeah. everything. Um, so the general public uh, love it. Like I've I've been followed, almost to the point of being followed home. Have guys pull over. <laughs> Stopped at the lights, you know, yelling out the window, man, I love your car, it looks awesome. Uh, the only time I get, not hate, but a little bit uh, snide remarks, I guess, is when you go to a mini show and there's the older, older guys there that uh, aren't such a fan. But Really? I, uh, I went to, yeah. So I went to a mini master last year and uh, came away with a couple of trophies, which... Uh, was pretty cool so uh yeah obviously there's a few people that like it i've had more positive uh, responses than negative which actually surprised me what's something like they would say they just kind of like you could tell they just have this or do they say something about when you go I, personally I, I i have a few people that say it all the time I'm like well, you should paint it you should paint it I'm like well do you want to pay for the paint job uh you know i don't know but i think it looks kind of cool it fits um, there's just, there's people that say that shit all the time. And it's like, I, I, it's like, what, yeah. <laughs> what does it matter? Like, aren't you, you shouldn't you yeah, just be it's... happy that we are keeping it on the road and driving it and having fun with it? Like who gives a shit? It's my car, not your car. Yeah. Yeah. That's my theory. Exactly. It's, I, I've had quite a few people ask me, you know, when are you going to paint it? And my response now is it is painted. So, you know, just paint on it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like I could. The, there's that part of my brain that's like, all right, cool. If we paint it, it has to be concourse condition, mm-hmm. and I don't, I don't have the budget to get it restored to the level that my brain wants it to be. So I'll, uh, I'll leave it as it is. I'll drive it. I'll enjoy it. Um, and yeah, like I think a lot of that as well comes from. So I was off the road for 15 years 
and it just it was one of those things of I'll get to it one day I'll get to it one day I'll get to it one day mm-hmm. and then I just decided one day that it was like I'm not going to get this done how I want it done uh, and by this point my dad had passed and um, this is kind of the only thing that I've got left uh, from him and so I was like you know what I'm just going to fix it uh, mechanically so it's safe to drive and we'll uh, we'll go from there so it had new brakes uh, new shocks all that kind of you know all the gear so it starts stops turns does everything it should nice and safe uh, well you know as much as a mini starts and stops and turns but um, <laughs> yeah so it's safe my, <laughs> my my theory just was I had that um, bit of a switch in in mindset of you know you see all these minis come up for sale that they've started to have a restoration done and they get to the paint point and then they end up getting sold because either people have run out of money or life gets in the way or whatever and I didn't want to get to that point I'm like I'd mm-hmm. rather fix it and drive it as is um, and go from there so. I agree, man. I agree. I mean, my, my, um, my, uh, mini, I did the same thing. I started down the route of, it was already kind of in pieces. So I started down the route of kind of sanding some start sp- spots down and trying to fix some rust areas, um, that actually needed to be attended to. Um, and then I was just like, you know what, I don't, who cares? Like it, it, it just looks cool. It has some paint on it. The roof was still white. The, some panels were green, but it just had that kind of look and uh, with the the fenders that were new, but also were kind of sitting while they kind of had like some patina on them already. I was like, screw it. Let's do it. Like, let's just, I just want to, I don't want to drive it. I want to have fun. I've waited this many years to pick one up and finish it and drive it. Like screw it. My Cooper S now, I like really want to do the same thing, but I feel like that one actually deserves to be finished and I'll, yeah. I'll I'll take my time on that one. <laughs> yeah, take your time, spend the money on that one. But yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah. And my theory is, you know, I could spend twenty or thirty grand on restoring it, twenty thirty grand plus, um, yeah. and and have people go, yeah, cool, nice mini, or I can leave it the way it is, and yeah. I have people like literally yell at me like, that's mad. Oh so, yeah. It's, um, I agree. I think, yeah. I think honestly it has a, a better presence. <laughs> I mean, it's like you said, if uh, uh, no offense against the purple car, but if you drove mm-hmm. your green car versus the purple car, I guarantee more people go up to your, your patina green car, right? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. It's, it's, yeah um, I mean, we pull, I pull up to shows all the time or meets or whatever, and there'll be a just sparkly, cool vintage, you know, whatever it is, MG or whatever. And they, for whatever reason, it just like pulls your eye and it's like, it's not, it's, I don't know. It's like a, I don't know. It's like a rebel without a cause in a way. It's, uh, I agree. It's cool. It's, it's character. And, um, you know, it's like you said, a lot underneath has been, uh, upgraded and just enjoy it now. Yeah. Yeah. So when I, when I put it back on the road, it had a, a 998 in it at that point. Cause, um, a few years earlier, dad had, come and uh, reclaimed his 1275 <laughs> uh, and, and and left me with a, a 998 of unknown condition, which was fine. It, it was always was always the deal. At some point, he'd come and steal it back. Right. Um, but, yeah, we had no idea on what the, the engine condition was like. Um, and then while it was uh, at my mum and stepdad's house, so this is before it got... The, uh, the tree grown over it. Uh, they had a flood and it ended with water up to the, the gear stick. So wow. it obviously entered the engine at some point through the uh, uh, through the dipstick. And um, so we drained the oil, drained the water, uh, and knowing full well that this engine probably wasn't going to last, but it started and it ran, and it was enough to get me inspired to to fix it even more, like to just, to get it on the road. Um, 
and it was all I needed, I think. It was just I drove it around for, I think, five months before one of the rings decided that it looked better on top of the piston than it did down the side. And, um, yeah, so at, and at that point, I'd already started um, putting together bits and pieces for a new engine for it anyway because it was a bit smoky and pretty gutless. But, it, um, yeah, just, I've become a strong believer in just getting them on the road, driving them, enjoy them. Um, yeah, like it's, it's 60 years old next year. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, it's fair and okay, but it's, it's had a bit of a story over the last 20 years or so. Yeah, for sure. And it shows that it's cool. Um, so you were driving, you were saying the, the ring that broke, that was the 998. Yeah. yeah. And then you were building, were you building the 1275? No, I built a, so 1275. So just stupid money. Um, I'd love a 1275. Uh, and they're just becoming a little bit harder to, to get. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I could probably get one out of the UK, a, an A plus engine, but it's, um, my theory was I'll just build something that's a little more, uh, obtainable and 1100s, um, have, they kind of always had uh, a bit of a wrap of being a, a boat anchor. So not a, a great engine. Uh, I remember my dad telling me years and years ago, but then speaking to a few more people in, in the know now, um, and obviously, uh, things have come a, a long way in that time. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, 1100s, they go all right. And this was built in bits and pieces. I definitely learned a lot while, uh, while building this things to do things not to do again. Um, compression's way too high, but, uh, it starts, it runs, it goes. Uh, but yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually interested to build a 998 at some point. Right. Just because I think they, they rev a little bit harder. Mm-hmm. Um, but the 1100s are known as a bit more of a torquey engine. So. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I was kind of wanting to dive into it a little bit more. Um, I have, uh, I think it's a 1098 or 1100. Um, I bought it, but they said it was a 998, but the numbers I think correlate with a 1098. So I was interested. I, I don't really know anything about them. Like you said, I've heard they're not as good. Everyone kind of goes 998 or 1275, but um, I feel like nowadays you could absolutely make that, you know, fun, torquey. Yeah. Yeah. So this, um, uh, forget his name. Um, Graham Russell uh, over here in Australia. He, um, He's got a small ball project website where he went through um, the building of a of a 1098 and what okay. you can do to them, and it's uh, yeah, it's it's pretty interesting, a little bit inspiring to to get it done. But from my understanding, 998 and 1098 are the same block. Anyway, it's just different crank. Hmm. Okay. So. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. I don't really know too much about it. I kind of just learn as I go here. So, we all. <laughs> so how'd you get uh, into kind of tinkering on your own mini? Is that something that you learned from your dad or you kind of always been uh, mechanical oriented? Um, yeah, yeah, a bit of both. So uh, my dad has always tinkered with cars. Um, so there was always cars in his shed. Uh, especially once the mini came around. Uh, my stepdad had a mechanical workshop and he raced Speedway. So same thing. There was always cars being worked on. There was race cars in the shed or in the factory. Uh, so before and after school, if I wasn't riding my bike, I was at the workshop stuffing around with cars and pissing off the mechanics. But... Um, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, just cars have always been in and around my life. So always tinkered with them. And um, I know enough to get me in trouble and sometimes get me out of trouble as well. But <laughs> Yeah, I think so too, yeah. 
Did you ever do any racing? You said your stepdad, what kind of cars did he race or what did he race? Uh, yes, I, I raced um, from uh, the age of 12 until I was about 18. And um, so we had a, a Datsun or Nissan 260Z uh, and a Datsun 240K two-door. 240K. Don't know what that is. So, C210, I'll Google that one. I think <laughs> so. Yeah, they're um, unfortunately we we went through so many of them when they were worth absolutely nothing, but now they're just fetching stupid money. Oh, I so, see. Those are cool. Mm, so, but yeah, so um, yeah, it's always been cars. I ended up leaving school uh, early because I was more focused on what I was going to do after school with uh, with cars than I was anything else uh it's uh yeah so what what kind of racing was that uh so dirt oval okay so yeah. is that like i guess like stock car racing kind of yeah yeah oh, cool. yeah basically cool. fairly uh fairly standard cars but it was uh yeah that's fun i like that i've uh i've been it's kind of a goal is trying to get into some sort of racing this year for myself. Um, it just seems like everything's so kind of far, far away. Everything's like two plus hours away from me, even if I want to just do like some sort of auto crossing, but yeah. we'll figure it out. <laughs> um, I yeah, wanted to kind of jump back, back to you uh, mentioned the spotlights on your, your mini. What kind are those and where the hell did you find a bracket big enough to uh, support those? Um, so they are Sibi Super Oscars. So I think they're either seven or nine inch. They're stupidly big. Deep uh, too. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I ended up having to make brackets to to support it, um, and just trying to work out a way, just trolling. Um, Instagram, Google, trying to look for uh, light brackets on mm -hmm. how I could get it installed. You know, there were some that I liked, some that I didn't. I really wasn't keen on the like the Rover Sports Pack type yeah. mounts. Um, so yeah, it's it's currently mounted at on the top of the slam panel and down on the front subframe. And oh, it's double just, mounted. That's uh, <laughs> gonna yeah, say. <laughs> and then a, a bracket that comes through the through the grill. Uh, and they're actually made out of uh, out of bookshelf brackets. <laughs> went down to the local hardware and bought a couple of big brackets. But oh, perfect. Um, it's a not great for serviceability because you've got to take <laughs> the spotlights off to take the grill out. But to get the grill out because it's got overriders, you have to take the front bumper off. Oh so, no. <laughs> It's uh, yeah, not great just to try and change the oil filter. You can do it without it, but it's... Right, right, right. You got to kind of go up and under. A little difficult. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's so, awesome. Yeah, my um, my Marshall spot that's there, it's quite... I thought it was quite big. It looks kind of big and goofy on my car, but uh, it's funny. But it just enough room where I can kind of s slide my, uh, my uh, grill off to service the car. But it's... Um, I repurposed one of those older rover brackets and it sucked. I had to like chop it up and bend it, but whatever Get, gets it done. Yeah, For those I mean, that haven't seen his mini and you're just listening right now, these lights are humongous. I th like you said, either seven or eight or excuse me, nine inches. They're look bigger than the headlights and they're super yeah. cool. They're deep, nice round on the back. They're kind of rusty looking, but they just protrude. And that, one of the more recent pictures you posted, it just has a, perfect kind of profile picture of it it's they're so cool yeah and like they sit butt up against the mustache above the grill <laughs> like they, they are hard mounted up against it and you know they uh they protrude a bit they, they get a little bit of hate but <laughs> of course uh, of course yeah but, if you're not uh, getting no, hate was... you're not doing it right i guess no so i jumped on uh on gumtree which i think is like your craigslist uh-huh uh, and yeah, this guy was selling them. I'm assuming they either came off a, um, a 
a four wheel drive, like off a bull bar or something, because they're quite uh, quite burnt across the top, like sun bleached. Okay. Um, and yeah, originally I wanted four across the front of it, but uh, trying to find another two that are similar in the uh, in the looks department is proving rather difficult. So <laughs> right, keep it yeah. for two for now. Yeah, if you had four of those, you'd do like that uh, kind of Italian job, or that's three, but kind of like upper, yeah. you know, upper decker. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I like how, um, so, uh, like the old rally so I like Cole from uh, Classic Mini Dialogue. Yes, got on yeah, his he has there. that. Yeah, yeah, I quite like how they're set up. Yeah, I like that. I think that'd look cool for sure. Uh, you mentioned uh, previously you went to you know some mini shows. I think you said mini masters. Is that, uh, is that mini master? You, mini master. How's the mini community in Australia? I, I don't know too much about how many they made. Um, it seems like it's fairly popular there, um, but how are the mini shows, mini meets? Are there a bunch of clubs? How's that? Uh, yeah, yeah, they're. Um... Like I've only kind of just got back into uh, the the mini community as uh, as such. Um, obviously, not having it on the road for a few years, I uh, I got out of it. But uh, generally, from what I can tell, they do have like a big event in most states at some point throughout the year. It's uh, it's nothing like the UK, from what I can tell. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, keeping in mind, they only made minis in Australia up until the late 70s. So, um, yeah, we probably don't have quite as many here. Um, but they are still very popular. And, um, yeah, they uh, yeah, they have a few big events. I've been to one uh, down south uh, when I was much, much younger, uh, and that was cool. Uh, and yeah, the the one last year was uh, one of my first ones back since been on the road. Awesome, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. yeah, like you said, they didn't make it for that long. And I mean, me being a stupid American, I I I think of us, I think of Australia as humongous. So I feel like there's a lot of space between them <laughs> wherever they could be sold. I don't know. Is that is that kind of true? Yeah. Or not? <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, you know. It, it, Nowhere near as big as the states, but at the same time, it's pretty big. You know, I think. It, take, it, it takes you a few hours to get between each uh, each capital city. Okay. Uh, so it'd be a yeah, you know, eight, ten, twelve hour drive to get from where I am uh, to the next major city, being Sydney. Um, so yeah. So you uh, you daily drive this bad boy, huh? At the moment, yeah. Do you have another car as a backup, or are you just full send on the Mini? Uh, I, I do have another car that is a backup, but funnily enough, I actually trust the Mini more than I trust the backup car. <laughs> what made you want to daily drive the Mini? You just, you just love it so much? It's just yeah. small, short commute? How is it actually daily driving a Mini? In Australia, uh, so I uh, I work night shift, so it's uh, it's pretty easy commute. It's Twenty two minute trip, I think it's about thirty k's each way. Uh, so sixty k's each day that I do in it on my way to work and back. Um, cruise along the highway, so it's hundred and uh, hundred kilometers an hour, and um, yeah, it's it's fine. Sitting at 100, it gets a little bit hot. If I sit on 90, 95, it cruises along really, really nicely. So, uh, Let's see. I'm doing conversion. Wait, you said it's a 60-kilometer 60, 60 kind of round trip. That's that's yeah. decently far. Like, that's not anything. 20, 20 minutes in the mini. Like, that's not, like, just a quick little – that's pretty good. So what's uh, – yeah. I'm, I'm doing the math now, kilometers per hour. <laughs> <laughs> Two miles per hour. Um, What's that? You're okay. So you're at like yeah, sixty ish, sixty ish. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's kind of like where I cruise to. Is if I'm, I can cruise at. Meanwhile, this is a twelve seventy five with uh, probably a different gear gearing, but um, yeah, like sixty five is like comfy. Anything higher, it's like screaming. So 
Yeah, mine's um, so it's got a three, three seven six or three seven seven, whatever it is, uh, final drive. Okay. In it, so it it does get up there in the in the revs a little bit uh, at uh, at that speed, but uh, yeah, it's it goes okay. <laughs> what's what's like your uh, highway system like? Is it is it I I mean like again is this I'm not too familiar with Queenstown Queenstown right you said Queensland or Queensland sorry Queens Queenstown yeah. something else see stupid American Near enough. <laughs> close enough um, is it is it a big city is it uh, big highway systems or is it kind of you know smaller roads are you are there twisty roads like is it just straight grid I don't know anything about it uh, yeah so. Um, so because again, like Americans think of Australia as like the desert. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's um, my trip to work. It's five minutes onto onto the motorway, and then you know, fifteen twenty minutes from there to work. So it's three lane, four lane highway. Um, so that makes it nice and easy. But yeah, uh, yeah. Depending on where you are, then it's just little B roads and stuff like that. So I, uh, I live near the beach, but if you travel 20, 30 minutes inland and we've got a few windy roads and, uh, some more, uh, more mini inspired roads. Yeah. Nice. Cool. I mean, it kind of sounds similar to like where I live. I live pretty damn close to the beach. I was just at the beach today, like I said, and, and then if you drive a little bit inland, you're right at the mountains. So twisty is, I mean, Southern California has a lot of, I guess, California in general has a lot of um, really good Canyon roads. Um, yeah. But uh, awesome. That's fun, man. Yeah. I, I um, for a little bit when I worked pretty close to home, I drove my mini quite often, but um, not as much as I liked. So now it's just a weekend warrior, although I work from home now, so I, barely get to drive it although i don't drive it right now anyway because i just pulled the engine so yeah yeah, yeah. no it's um yeah i i'm actually going to sell my uh my other my, my backup car um purely because i realize i don't get anywhere near as much fun and and joy out of it than i do with uh with the mini yeah you know like if yeah you haven't had a shitty day at work you can jump in the car at the end of the shift and uh, just cruise home and take the long way home and uh, makes all right with the world again. Oh yeah, definitely. I a hundred percent agree with that. Any uh, future plans coming up for it? Any modifications um, going down? Oh, I'd, um, ugh. Currently I have some Swift tune mirror brackets to, uh, to install. Oh, nice. Uh, which I'm uh, I'm super keen for. Not that I'll probably be able to see too much out of them, but I just love the look of it. And um, I've uh, also just finally got some new Smiths gauges uh, to go in as well. So I'll finally have a taco and water temp and uh, an oil pressure gauge that uh, that actually work. So <laughs> it um, yeah. The while I was building the engine for it, I very quickly started running out of money for it as you do. So I bought mm-hmm. some, some, uh, some cheapy gauges. The oil pressure was fine, but the water temp, um, it was, uh, it was reading 60 degrees C and, uh, it was boiling. So it, uh, yeah, that, uh, led to a few issues last year on a, uh, on a long trip to a, to a mini event that I was looking forward to. And, Ended up blowing a head gasket on the way there. So <laughs> nice. That was, uh, that was fun. Nice. But, uh, yeah. Turned out that the head bolt stretched. So there was oh. just uh, yeah, wasn't great. Yeah, I did. I used uh, just kind of generic uh, head studs um, on my rebuild, and my head gasket was leaking like right away, and when I was taking them out to kind of replace everything, kind of look it over, it's like the, instead of the nut coming off the, the stud, it like 
came out as one. I was like, this is shit. Like, what the hell's happening? But I think it, like, stretched weird. And, yeah, so I went to ARP. I don't know if it was AR- the ARP studs or the he- new head gasket or the procedure I did, but uh, I feel like I'm never going to not use ARP ever again there. M- yeah, so much yeah, higher I, quality. Yeah. I uh, So when I was building the engine, I spoke to my stepdad about it. Um, being a retired mechanic, and he's built a few engines in his time. Right. And I'm like, oh, I want to get ARP. And he's like, no, no, I don't want about it. Great eight bolts are great eight bolts. They're fine. I'm like, all right, cool. No dramas. And, uh, yeah, I ended up buying some, some head studs from a mini specialist. And, um, yeah, they ended up just uh, stretching. So there was very little, uh, very little talk on the head. So my trip to Newcastle, uh, which is kind of halfway between Sydney and Brisbane, uh, for the Ralston Classic last year, which is probably the biggest event that we have uh, in Australia, cruise-wise anyway. Uh, I broke down halfway there, so basically the cost of the motel room that night would have covered buying ARP head studs yep, yep. straight up. So, yep. uh, I, I don't yeah, know 100%. I'd, yeah, just ARP head studs, I don't bother. I had the same same kind of thing, and and you know it could have just been a batch that was kind of shitty, but um, you know they didn't seem like terrible quality, but mm-hmm. yeah, it just it just didn't work out. So it is what it is. But once I had the, compared side by side the ARP and the standard ones, I was just like, yeah, there's no comparison. It's so I don't blame anybody for telling me that. I would have done the same thing. I was kind of on this fence. I was like, yeah. it's not a high performance engine. I don't need it. It's fine. I can torque it. I understand. I'm, you know, blah blah blah. But, anyways, that's the word of a uh, warning for everybody out there. ARP for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. <laughs> Any other uh, projects coming up, or just um, just the mini? No other side side um... things you got going. No, not really. We've got uh, I've got my mum's sixty five deluxe, which needs a gearbox overhaul, so that'll be uh, that'll be the next thing. Nice to uh, to fill in a bit of time. So um, yeah, there's a few bits and pieces I'd like to do to my car still, but it'll pretty much stay looking as it is. Maybe a few more little race car inspired uh, bits and pieces on it, but. Um, yeah, I, I, I like the way it looks at the moment, and I've kind of just grabbed bits and pieces of different, uh, I guess, different genres of car that I like and use that on mine. So, whether it's circuit racing, a little bit of rally here, a little bit of JDM um, type setup, I love the Japanese, uh, yeah, minis, their, their mini scene is just so cool. Yeah, I think you could you could plop yours in Japan and it would look like kind of one of their builds. It's it has that little bit of a vibe to it for sure. It's kind of Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I think it's the... it's perfect. I I love it. Like little like those new mirrors that you said, th- those are going to look fantastic yeah. on it. It'll bring it. Yeah, the really uh difficult part with having a mini, I guess uh, you probably found a similar issue with not having it all bright and shiny is when it comes to replacing parts on it. <laughs> yes. You can't just, you can't go to mini sport or mini spares, mini mania, whatever, and buy new parts. Cause it's going to look ridiculous on your car. Yeah. So you've got to try and find old shitty bits and pieces. Yeah. Um, like, and I, I went on a hunt for overriders for quite a while. <laughs> and, uh, there was a, a lady selling a whole bunch of them. I don't think they're, uh, they're matching, at all um i think i've got a right one on the left side because it sits different to the other side but it's <laughs> what i had and it was the worst looking one out of them so i, I was okay with that that's perfect but, uh, yeah yeah that's funny uh that I, I subconsciously do that yes like my seats that i got for it they're pretty cool looking bucket seats um but they were just trashed like they're like it's I think it was like a suede maybe. And it was like at, at some point it was like either a dark gray and like a dark red, but it's kind of like faded pink and light gray. And they're, they're ripping a little bit, but the guy was like, Oh, they're free. I was like, perfect. That looks, they just look 
right at home in my mini. I sprayed a little bit of like fabric uh, color on it and it, you know, faded again. So it, it looks perfect. But yeah, I'm like my Marshall light too. It was the shittiest one in this guy's bunch. It was dented, negotiated a deal on it. So I just kind of restored it a little bit, but it's got a little, little patina on it. So yeah, it does. yeah it's, you can't, you can't just buy off the shelf parts, at least uh, on the exterior for no. sure. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's actually hard work to to get it the way it is. But um, yeah, you you mentioning seats. It's the one thing I've changed that is probably a little bit uh, iffy, I guess. So I had the the tombstone style clubman seats in it. Um, not terribly uncomfortable, but they look horrible and they're not overly supportive. Every time you go around a corner, it felt like you're about to fall out the door. All right. Um, so I ended up getting some later model seats out of a uh, Suzuki Swift oh. to uh, to put in it. So ideally, I'd love some low back seats in it. Yeah, because uh, I just I love the look of low back seats. Yeah, they look super cool. For, for, uh, for these uh, being as supportive as they are, uh, they do the job really nicely, considering how much I drive it. Yeah, the, uh, definitely. The yeah, that's good. important for you for sure. <laughs> yeah, like mine are. Although I took it on a really long road trip and it, they, they're, they're, they're pretty comfy, but they're, you know, bucket seats. So they're not, <laughs> I would imagine I'd get tired of them after a while uh, on daily driving it. Yeah. Yeah. Rohan, are you ready for the Patty probe? Let's give it a whirl. <laughs> All right. What is your uh, favorite mini variant? Ah. Uh. Somewhere across between a Mark II Cooper S and a Mini Pickup. Interesting. Mark II, why not Mark I Cooper S? I don't know. I just, I like the Mark IIs for, for some reason. I like that. Always I like your style, man. Uh, yeah. No, they're, they're cool. Uh, so you currently own one Mini. How many have you owned over your, your life? Uh, literally two, so my Just current two. one and the uh, the purple one, which is now my mum's. Awesome. Okay. All right. This one. How many people? This this might be a good one for you. Daily drive it. How many people have you fit in it before, or uh, what's the biggest thing that you've fit in it before? Uh, so three people uh, is the most I've had in it, and three people plus you, or three total. No, three in total. Okay. Uh, and then the, I think the biggest things I've had in it was uh, I had a bonnet, door, and boot lid <laughs> for a minute nice. in there. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Not too long ago, I uh, I was getting my exhaust fixed, and I had it like through the back and into the front past the shifter. <laughs> it was like really awkward, but, you know. Yeah. Got to oh, got to get the exhaust fixed. Absolutely. I went to a hardware uh, last week and had to get some bits and pieces. Um, and I ended up with a piece of conduit two meters long. Yeah. And it literally sits right up in the far corner and uh, right in the far corner of the uh, the dash at the front. So corner to two corner. meters is the is the longest that you can fit in it without going diagonal. <laughs> Perfect. That's funny. Yeah, because uh, I think in your Instagram, I've seen you hauling, you know, boxes and stuff like that too. For yeah, something. yeah, my uh, my partner and I got a coffee shop, so yeah, it um, you go and do a collection of bits and pieces. So it's uh, you know, it, it would be cool to have a pickup like uh, uh, what's your name, Ricky? R- Ricky, yeah, no limit. Um, mm-hmm. But you know what, you can still fit a fair amount in a. Uh, a saloon, so. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, it's it's just a little little more like a Jenga puzzle piece, but whereas he can just throw it in the his truck bed. But yeah, that's yeah. they have quite a bit of room actually. So yeah, they're um yeah quite surprising. A series Honda swap or other? Uh, a series, straight up. But if I had two minis, there would uh, there would definitely be another variant 
uh, under the bonnet and in the second car. Are Honda swaps big over there, or is there another engine that you guys swap into them, or do you guys um, not really swap a lot over there? Uh, Honda swaps are still very much a thing over here. Uh, the uh, what was it? The K two hundred, the mm -hmm. motorbike uh, BMW cylinder right. head, right, 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 on uh, on twelve seventy fives is somewhat popular from what I've seen. Um, Nissan Micra engines out of those as well. So yeah, there's, this uh, just there's reminded me in Australia. I think this is an Australian Mini. Is because you guys are. I don't know if it's your area, um, like burnout cars, right? Isn't there one over there that has like a V8 in it with like giant slicks in the back doing those burnout donut thing competitions? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's. Uh, I'm not sure where he's from, but uh, yeah, completely. Um, yeah, crazy car. There's actually a really cool one which has just been completed. Uh, Dutchies Mini. It's all-wheel drive WRX mid-mounted. What? It is. Who is who is insane? Dutchies. Uh, Dutchies Mini. Dutchies. How do you spell yeah. it? Dutchies. Dutchies. I'm gonna look that up. Yeah. Dutchies Mini. It, it's a awesome build. Wow. Yeah, I can't uh, imagine. Yeah. Imagine an all-wheel drive Mini. That would be insane. I think it's all-wheel drive. I know it's mid-mount, um, but yeah, he, he's done a mega job on it. Wow, cool. I'll have to take that take a look at that one. That's cool. Yeah. Um what is your favorite mini modification, either one that you've done to your mini or one that you plan to do or want to do? Uh, uh, probably the roof rack. Yeah, it's a good one. I love the roof rack. It's um it's not even off a mini. It's I don't know what it's from, but it's uh it kind of fits, so uh, it, uh, yeah, I, I like the look. Um, VW or something, maybe? It's not, it, it looks um, like it fits pretty good. It does, yeah. It um, cost me 20 bucks. It, it oh. ended up costing me more to get the rubber feet out of the UK for it than it did uh, <laughs> the actual whip rack itself. But, oh, damn. Um, yeah, I, um, other than that, I think removing the flares off mine is probably. Um, one thing I'm I'm quite happy with as well, because they had those horrible plastic aftermarket flares, that right? Just destroy the uh, the body shape on a Mark One. So you're lucky they I, didn't uh, uh, chop the the front fender. Yeah, it, it's funny when I was uh, when I was a kid and I first got the car, I wanted to go full sports pack type setup on it, 13 inch wheels, sports pack arches, or Z Max right. kit. Yeah, <laughs> um, very uh, very grateful that uh, younger me didn't actually do that. Yeah, definitely that would be uh, a shame in my eyes. But uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, teach their own for sure. But yeah, that that rack looks like it fits pretty pretty damn good. Yeah. Um. All right. What's next on the list here? Uh, t ten inch, twelve inch, or thirteen inch? There's only one answer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. What's your favorite mini wheel? Whoa. Got us. I love the rose petals. But I, yeah, I, th I see you're knocking around a there. few ideas not too long ago. I was, but looking around, rose petals seem to be on just about everything at the moment. Right. Um, but I, I would actually really love a set of. Um, I think they're the LP 918s. Yes. Widened steel wheels. Yes. Um, off white. Just. Yeah, those would look yeah. great on yours. Yeah, I had a set, and unfortunately, I sold them to you know make some room and save up for the engine build. But um, yeah, those are definitely super cool on on uh, without flares and stuff. They look they look great. Yeah. Yeah, there's a company that re. Uh, remanufactures in there i think or similar specs so yeah yeah Maybe yeah i think day. you can pretty much buy them well like you said br similar specs brand new from like mini spares and stuff yeah uh from what i can remember but uh yeah um what's the most pain in the ass job that you've done on your mini uh 
upper control arm pin uh, and bearings, trying to get that back in while it's in the car. <laughs> yeah, that one's kind of a pain in the ass for sure. There's so much swearing and cursing and just... <laughs> For, um, for anyone that needs to do it, seriously, just drop your subframe <laughs> and and do it that way because there's no point. It's such a pain in the ass. Like, unless like you cut the, the inner wings. Getting the uh, the little, like, oh, mine has, like, a little hole on one side and it's, like, just enough to, like, get a little ratchet, ratcheting wrench in there. Like, <laughs> it's, like, two clicks at a time. It's And then to try to get it out. Yeah, it's, that, one's a, yeah. that one's a bitch for sure. When I was uh, doing the right hand side, I think I had about six different extensions hooked up to it and went through the grill. It's just, yeah, I'm uh, trying to keep the rubber seal on the bearings as well. Oh to yeah, get it all lined up. Oh yeah, I yeah. forgot about that part. Yeah, and it like Not fun. got got pinched or slips off, and <laughs> that was a bad one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, last one here. If you could have a drink, beer, coffee, tea, whatever your drink of choice is, with one mini celeb. Who would it be? Mini celebrity, Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean, that's a fantastic answer. I like that. Wasn't expecting yeah. that. That's yeah. a good one. Rowan Atkinson is actually a, a genuine car guy as well. So yes, he's. Uh, I reckon that'd be a cool chat. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's. Uh, he definitely is uh, into cars, and that would be a cool, uh, cool chat for sure, for sure. Awesome, man. Uh, any other uh, interesting things you want to plug? Uh, your your uh, Instagram, like we said, Self Rust Restoration Society. Um, anything else that you want the people to know? You know, we're we're at over a thousand listens nowadays, so we got we got a big yeah, audience yeah, you've now. You've been doing you've been doing well. <laughs> Cranking them out, man. Uh, I'm trying to. It's fun for me. I like it. Yeah, no, it's cool. Uh, as you say, man, like the stories behind the cars. Uh, just cool so uh, i love what you're doing i appreciate um it. honestly just if you've got a mini that's been sitting there as a project if it's in you know good enough condition obviously if it's a uk mini it's probably rusted with the shit out so you're probably going to do some work on it but uh, i think we're fairly lucky here in uh, in australia i think you guys are probably the same over there in the us just you know make it safe but Get it on the road, enjoy it. Don't uh, don't let it sit in the shed. Hell yeah, they're, uh, they're too much fun for that. So that's a good message. I agree. It's uh, too many people get caught up in that, and they're missing out on the fun of actually driving it. So I agree with that, hundred yeah. yeah, percent. Awesome man. man, I appreciate you being on, and um, I'm sure I'll talk to you over Instagram and all that jazz. So uh, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Catch you on the next one. Thank you.